Let's talk about straps, baby. In the wild and woolly world of professional wrestling, Champions are distinguished folk who are determined by the company they work for to be the best of the best in kayfabe terms. It is a gold-plated pat on the back to have one of these. It's a cowhide high five. It is a bejeweled bonus in your pay packet. But not everybody can be the heavyweight champion of the freaking world. And that is why secondary titles are so very, very important. The WWE, without the intercontinental title, title seems weird. It was like that for a while, but let's not talk about it. WCW without the Cruiserweight Championship would be a bit lost. And Main Event Wrestling, where would they be without the MEW Northeast Championship? Currently held by Benji. Good lad, him. Good lad. We're going to take a look at what TNA Wrestling have been doing in the world of secondary gold. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of why we're here, I want to give some nods, some very firm nods in the direction of Impact Wrestling. The X Division Championship has been a trend-setting division for many, many, many years now. A weight limits, no limits, however you run it, they give you amazing matches and really develop some true stars as well. And long before the WWE Women's Revolution, the knockouts were knocking it out of the park over the knockouts championship. So there has been some good that have come from lower card gold in the world of TNA and Impact Wrestling, but quite a few of their secondary titles, let's be honest here, haven't quite hit the mark. And in this video, we're going to be pouring one out to the tried and trite secondary belts. We are going to be laughing out loud at some legendary lost gold, and we're going to look at how a company of a thousand names is trying one more time to hold a longer gold note. My name is Tom Campbell from Cultaholic.com and this is the weird legacy of Impact slash TNA Wrestling Championships. We're going to start with this one all the way back well over a decade in 2007. This was never going to be the TNA IC. It was certainly going to be potentially the TNA IPA, though. I am, of course, talking about James Storm's World Beer Drinking Championship, one that he brought to the world in 2007. And he and Eric Young had a series of beer drinking competitions over. And what was the belt? It's, that's the one there, that beauty right there. That's, that's something that Steve Austin would turn his back on people in Texas for, that is. What a dream to hold a championship where you can drink beer. And this happened between Eric Young and James Storm. They had themselves a series of matches as well as a World Beer Drinking Championship series for that title. And one match that featured, I say match, uh, that featured James Storm wetting himself and Eric Young getting drugged. It's weird, a weird storytelling time. Very weird storytelling time. Rhino would get into the mix for this as well, and he would take the World Beer Drinking title. Uh, James Storm would win it back in a ladder match at the beginning of 2008, but Rhino would steal it shortly afterwards and destroy it. And that would be the end of the World Beer Drinking title. Just a bit of fun to get us started, to give a nod to that particular bit of gold. We move from the bar to the Wrestling Hall of Fame, where we find, in 2008, the TNA... Legends Championship. When Booker T arrived and joined the main event Mafia, he wanted to do something to stand out from the lads, and he brought out with him this solid steel briefcase that contained something very prestigious indeed. It was, of course, the TNA Legends title, awarded to the greatest that wrestling has to offer. So, of course, he gave it to himself, and he defended the belt roughly whenever he damn well pleased. That was the schedule that he cut. He would lose that title to A. AJ Styles, and the moment that AJ won the title, it went from being sort of just a, like a bit of arrogant Booker T hardware to a Facebook official TNA title. So AJ Styles was the defending TNA Legends Championship, a Legends Champion, a title that he lost to Kevin Nash, who in turn lost it to Mick Foley, who in turn lost it back to Kevin Nash, who in turn lost it to Eric Young. And now we, I say this with the greatest the greatest of respect to Eric Young. 
who is a phenomenal worker. But at this point in his career, Eric Young holding the Legends Championship kind of fell under the Trade Description Act. So something had to change. So it became the TNA Global Championship. So what did the Global Championship mean? Because we already had a world title. So we have a world title and now a, a global title. Wikidiff, by the way, says the difference between the two terms. Uh, world is encompassing human collective existence, whilst global is a scoped identifier. Okay? Okay. Eric Young wanted to differentiate this from the world title. So he said that you can only challenge for this title if you are non-American or you are on non-American soil. Okay, that's a scoped identifier, if I do say so myself. The title was won in Cardiff, Wales by Rob Terry. Welsh boy done good, beating Eric Young for the title. Now, at this point, Rob Terry was a little bit, he was rather uh, Gwyneth, uh, but consequently, they made his match much, much shorter than they needed to be. They just gave him some quick, easy wins until he lost the belt to AJ Styles, who was an American challenger, Challenging for the title on American soil. Yeah, these, they've lost the plot already. So time for a rebrand. We say au revoir to the global championship and we switch the power on, waggle the antenna out of the, out of the window, try and get a picture on the TNA television championship. Now this is kind of what this belt should have been the whole time. The idea of having a belt that is defended relatively regularly on your scheduled television programs. You know, the TV title is a kind of tried and true uh, uh, secondary title for many places. AJ Styles holding it was a good shout as well. Uh, and, and he held it for a decent amount of time. However, he didn't get to defend it that often. At one point, Hulk Hogan, of all people, who was then authority figure for TNA Wrestling, tried to bring a bit of life to the TV title by saying it must be defended every week on Impact, brother, brother, brother. Uh, this was uh, a, a statute that lasted uh, roughly a month or two before Creative, I don't know, saw a wasp fly into the room and got distracted and just forgot about the belt altogether. AJ Styles would, would have the uh, credibility of being the third longest reigning television champion. The second longest would be Devon Dudley, of all people, who won the belt and then did approximately nothing with it for a good long time before being stripped of the title owing to some contractual disputes. The man who had the most time with this particular incarnation of the title. You could say he became the beacon of broadcast bestowment. I am talking about the monster Abyss, who had two very, very, who had a com combined over nearly 400 days with the TNA TV title. I had to stop myself saying uh, much more than that because the second reign, didn't do anything with it for over a year. Like the title just knocked around. The World Beer Drinking Championship was defended more than Abyss's second reign of terror as the TV champion. It was just a belt that just got lost in the shuffle metaphorically moved to the graveyard shift in creative. And then in July of 2014, uh, then exec director Kurt Angle just, just canceled the whole series. But wait, what's this? What's this? A trick with a twist? Is the TV title back? Is it getting rebooted? Well, not quite. See, the, the physical belt is back again, but no longer is it the television championship. It is now the TNA King of the Mountain title. And of course, the first championship would be decided in 2015 Slammiversary in a King of the Mountain match. TNA's regular ass backwards ladder match that was won by, you guessed it, Jeff Jarrett, who was so proud to have a belt that represented a match that he had culminated, he had he curated and designed with the help of others. So proud was he to be the first ever TNA King of the Mountain champion that he forfeited the belt a month later to go get a job within the within within the back office as an on TV authority figure. So then it was vacated. The new champ was decided in an impromptu King of the Mountain match, and PJ Black had it. So well done, mate. Good to see. Uh, Eric Young would get a run with the belt as well, and that would leave him with the with the the, the 
the honor, the privilege of being the only person to hold all four versions of this belt. He was the Legends Champion, he was the Global Champion, he was the TV Champion, and he was the King of the Mountain Champion. What a weird thing to boast about. It's kind of like saying, I've printed off every Rule 34 picture of Waluigi in the sense that, you know, uh, you should be really happy with yourself for doing that, I guess, but it's probably not something you want to put on your CV. Uh, the King of the Mountain Championship would bounce around to a couple of other people. James Storm would have it for a bit. He'd lose it to Bobby Lashley, who would win it and then just go, nah, I don't want it. Just chuck it on the floor. Uh, this led to n another authority figure finally putting the full stop on the sentence that is that particular gold belt. It was then TNA president Billy Corgan who officially announced the King of the Mountain title was retired and deactivated completely. That ends, ends the run of this particular belt. But the beginning of the end is the beginning because it'll be soon after this that William Patrick Corgan would give us the Impact Wrestling Grand Championship. So, this one hits a little bit different. The rumor is that the belt itself was going to be the newly designed TNA Championship, which they never ended up using. But and that's another video for another time, I reckon. But uh, this was less world title, more world of sport title, as all the matches were competed in three three minute rounds. And the person, sorry, five three minute rounds. In three minute rounds. And the person who got either a pinfall, a submission, or a victory awarded by the judges will become the grand champion. Aaron Rex, formerly Damien Sandow, will become the first ever grand champion. We would see EC3 hold the title. We'd see Moose hold the title. And just a short while away from becoming McIntyre once more, Drew Galloway had a run with the grand title. He doesn't talk about that very often, which is a shame. Also, Josh Matthews can lay claim to being a former Impact grand champion. It was around this time he was doing his evil Michael Cole bought from Wish routine. And he was given the belt by Matt Seidel. And Matt Seidel, a week later, lost it to Austin Aries. And Austin Aries merged it with the Impact title, and we never spoke of it again. The Grand Championship was Grand Slammed into obscurity, and that's that. And for the longest of time, TNA slash Impact Wrestling uh, they ended the secondary title search because they realized what we already knew, that the X Division title was a perfect secondary title. You know, it, it gave some high profile matches. It really elevated stars. It did everything the secondary title should do. However, not anymore. We now have ourselves a new secondary title in Impact Wrestling. As just the other week, the Impact Wrestling board via Impact Wrestling on television unveiled the Impact Wrestling Digital Media Championship. Hmm, right, okay. We'll get to the name in a minute. But it makes sense, I suppose, as digital media has overtaken traditional telly. So to bring a TV title up to speed, you want to do something to name it after what it's what it predeceases. So why not call it, you know, something that represents streaming and the online world now? So that makes sense. The belt itself is being used to showcase their streaming platforms. It's going to be defended on Impact Plus and on Impact Insiders on YouTube. And you'll see it popping up in other places as well. Also, it looks as if, for all intents and purposes, this is going to be an intergender title. As we saw in video packages hyping it, several uh, female names as well as male names uh, in the mix for that title. So that's very progressive as well. But we've got to talk about the name. The Digital Media Championship. Um, the name doesn't roll off the tongue. The only other person that I've heard use the phrase digital media to describe streaming platforms and the internet at large is Phil in marketing. And, and I wouldn't trust what Phil in marketing says. He describes his performance of Ed Sheeran, Bad Habits on karaoke as audience growing and described his pumpkin spice latte the other day as zeitgeisty. So I'm not biting down on the name digital media championship. And as for the, the, the shape of the belt itself, I mean, it's it's not it's not the that one belt they use forever, but it's a bit um 
It's a bit all elite, isn't it? It's a bit all elite -y. It's a little bit all elite <laughs> Now, it is not fair for me to cast aspersions on the new boy. It's barely been up the top field yet. So I'm going to sit back and just wait and see how this goes. It's now, uh, it's now hopefully time for Impact's road trip along the title belt to come to a happy end without hitting any more potholes. Maybe this is where, with the Digital Media Championship, they take a turn off onto the right road and they hit the freeway. Or maybe they once again go down the wrong bypass and end up at the petrol station of doom where they're filling their car with the unleaded petrol of creative indifference and other, other car other car analogies. Why don't you just call it the internet title? That's, that's a home run. Just call it the internet title. My name is Tom Campbell. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.